I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 115, What Deprivation Really Is. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. I'm going to teach you how to get out of your diet brain so that you too can be naturally thin for life. No counting, restricting, or obsessing. I am going to take the mystery out of it for you so that you can become naturally thin starting today. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. So I will share some of this with you in upcoming episodes and kind of throughout. But my four-year-old has so many ways of talking about his body and what it feels like to be in his body and what food feels like to be in his body. And we have some of these conversations while I'm driving him home from school because it's usually just the two of us and when we're at the dinner table sometimes. And so I said to him, hey, Ben, do you want to, he calls all of you (laughs) and everyone in the Naturally Thin for Life program, he calls you all my mommy friends. I said, hey, Ben, do you want to talk to my mommy friends and tell them a little bit about what it's like for you? And he thought this was going to be so much fun. And I was like, this is going to be so great. I'm finally going to capture some of these amazing ways that he just innately naturally talks about his own body that I have never told him and that he's never heard from anywhere else. It's just truly to me, the evidence that our bodies want us to feel really energized and alive. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. I'm going to record on the podcast. I'm finally going to have it recorded because when we talk, I always think, oh, I wish I would have got that on like video or something. And so we sat down to do it and it was a flop. (laughs) What? say he was like so nervous he was sitting on my lap with his feet tucked and curled real tight under my legs and was just like um 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 so I thought you know what I'll share some of what he has told me throughout the next couple of episodes but to get a four-year-old to answer some questions for him and I thought I would just be able to like have a casual conversation with him and some of it would come out but it was a no so Anyways, what we're going to talk about today is some of what I have noticed with my children, but also with how I have come to really understand what deprivation is. And I think it's so fascinating to watch little kids because even like when they will say, hey, can we have a piece of chocolate? And sometimes they have chocolate, sometimes they don't. And if I say no, they don't feel like this intense missing out deprivation experience that we sometimes have as adults, especially when we've been dieting and we tell ourselves some version of I can't have X, Y, and Z food. And so I want to talk today really about what deprivation is and how we create it for ourselves and how to stop fearing it and how to stop choosing it. Because Deprivation is something that we create in our body. Deprivation is a feeling. It's an emotion. It's not something that just happens to us without us playing a part in it. And so often we think about deprivation as this terrible experience. And so often when we think about deprivation and restriction, I'm going to kind of think about them somewhat interchangeably. So if you identify more with feeling restricted when you're on a diet or when you're trying to lose weight, insert restriction here, I'm just going to continue to refer to it as deprivation. But they're very similar. Some people talk more about feeling deprived. Some people talk more about feeling restricted. But we fear deprivation because we think it just happens to us, right? It's like this thing out there in the world that just comes and goes without our control or without us having any part of it. And a caveat here is that I'm not talking about deprivation in the form of an eating disorder type of way where you truly are depriving your body of 
the energy that it needs to function, right? So I'm not talking about depriving your body by only eating 300 calories a day. Like that is not what I'm talking about at all. What I'm talking about here is the emotional deprivation that we create by the way we talk to ourselves, by the story that we have about food, by the thoughts we have in our brain about food. So when you've eaten a meal and you feel satisfied, your body is like, hey, I'm good, I'm done. And you see a piece of cake and you know if you eat the cake, you're not going to feel very good. And you know intellectually you don't actually want to eat the cake. Your body doesn't want the cake. You don't really want it. But you are telling yourself, I'm missing out. I'm missing out. I'm missing out if I don't have the cake. And you create the emotion of deprivation. That's what I'm talking about. And so what I want you to really understand from this episode is that deprivation truly is a choice. Deprivation is an emotional vibration in your body based on what you are thinking. And your thoughts in your brain are optional. And so therefore, deprivation is optional. And just because it is optional doesn't mean you should necessarily try to get out of it all of the time and talk yourself out of it. So I'm going to talk about two things today that you can do with deprivation. The first is be willing to feel the emotional vibration of it by understanding and recognizing that it truly is a choice. And then the second thing we'll talk about is how to change the story in your brain so that you don't create as much emotional deprivation. So I want you to really understand that when you tell yourself the sentence in your mind, I can't have that piece of cake, I'm missing out when I don't eat this food with other people. You're creating the emotion, the vibration of deprivation in your body with that thought, with that sentence in your brain. And how we know this is true is I want you to imagine sitting at a table with your family and your friends and your favorite food is there, right? And you are satisfied in your body. You don't actually need any food, right? You're not truly starving your body and depriving your body, but you're good and you're creating emotional deprivation by telling yourself, I can't have that chocolate cake in front of me, right? You're an adult. (laughs) You can, of course, have the chocolate cake. So we are going to talk about how to change that story in your mind, but how we know this is emotional deprivation and not something that just kind of happens to you and how we know it's a choice is if there was that same cake sitting there and you're sitting there looking at everyone else eating it and you're telling yourself, I can't have that, I can't have that, I can't have that, and you're feeling deprived, the emotion of deprivation in your body, if I then said to you, hey, there's this cake there, but if you don't eat the cake, I'm going to give you $1 million. All of a sudden, you'd be like, game on, not deprived anymore. (laughs) Now I feel happy and so excited, right? All of a sudden, the deprivation goes away. Not because anything circumstantially has changed. You're still sitting there with the same group of people around you, with the same cake in front of you, with the same brain and the same body. But all of a sudden, your thought process went from, I can't have that, to oh my God, I'm going to get a million dollars, right? So the sentence in your brain changed and therefore the emotion in your body changed. So deprivation truly is a choice and it's an emotional vibration in your body. So first, I want you to be willing to feel the emotion of deprivation, to know what that vibration feels like in your body so that you can stop fearing it. So often we fear and we dread an emotional experience, but the actual emotion itself isn't nearly as uncomfortable as we made it out to be in our mind. And so this is something we work a lot on in the Naturally Thin for Life program is being willing to feel different emotional experiences in your body, different vibrations in your body, because when you're willing to feel them, you stop fearing them. And then all of a sudden, the need to distract yourself from restlessness or stress or deprivation or restriction or anxiety, all of a sudden, the need to distract yourself from any emotional experience with food completely goes away. So, You want to understand what does deprivation feel like in your body? When you tell yourself, I can't have that, or when you tell yourself, I'm missing out on eating that, what vibrationally does that feel like in your body? 
And the point of describing the vibration, and I'll share with you how I describe it in my body, but I want you to be able to describe it in your body because the point of that is to show your brain that it is a vibration happening in your body and that you don't need to fear it. As soon as you start describing it to yourself and describing it objectively to yourself, And I do talk more about this in the how to feel episode, but why you want to do that is because as soon as you start talking about the experience you're having, it stops feeling like it's an out of control experience. You start feeling so much more in control. You start just watching yourself having a vibration of deprivation in your body and it doesn't have any power over you. And that's how your brain learns to stop fearing it. So you want to be willing to feel the emotion of deprivation in your body, recognizing that you're the one creating it with the way that you're choosing to think. So for me, when I experience the emotion of deprivation, it usually comes from the thoughts, I can't have that or I'm missing out on the fun because of X, Y, and Z food in front of me. And so as soon as I feel the emotion of deprivation, what it feels like for me is an inward pull, a sinking feeling in my stomach. It feels like a buzziness in my chest and that buzziness moves between my throat and my rib cage and it kind of goes up and down. And if I had to give it a color, it would be a dark gray color. And if I had to think about the texture too, it's like a buzziness with a lot of like little dots. Like I imagine like, you know, you have that piece of paper with like the sticky dots on it. They're like half of a circle. It feels like the little sticky dots like kind of buzzing in my throat and down to my stomach and back up and down. And when I sit there and I describe that to myself and I tell myself, oh, this is the emotion, the vibration of deprivation coming from the thought in my mind, I can't have that. All of the sudden, I feel a calm and a relaxation with that. One of the most profound times I remember experiencing this was when I was up north at our family's lake house. So we now have a family lake house. But before that, my dad and his brother used to own this lake house and all of our families used to go up together. And before that, my grandparents owned it. And so it's been like this family tradition to go to this lake house. So I remember going there. This was probably, I don't know, 10 years ago. And we used to drink a bit and I used to drink (laughs) a bit. And sometimes we would all kind of be like not feeling the greatest in the morning, a little hungover. And so then it was like this tradition that we would make these like breakfast sandwiches. So it'd be like a bagel with an egg and some cheese and some bacon and right to like soak up the alcohol and feel better the next morning. And I remember sitting there at this table with probably 10 other people and they're all eating these breakfast sandwiches. And I wasn't feeling so great because I had had a bit to drink the night before. And I remember sitting there thinking, oh, I can't have that. I can't have that breakfast sandwich because I want to lose weight. And I was feeling really deprived. And again, the emotion of deprivation. And then all of a sudden it clicked for me and I thought, wait a minute. I am willing to sit with this emotion because if I eat that breakfast sandwich, I know I'm going to actually feel so much worse. Like I'm going to feel worse in my body. My body is not going to feel great. So I already don't feel that great. And I'm going to compound it and make it feel even worse by eating that. And so I thought to myself, you know what? I'm actually depriving myself of feeling as good as I possibly could given my current hangover. I'm depriving myself of getting back to feeling feeling good as quickly as possible by eating this. So then all of a sudden, my willingness, and this is why it's so important, my willingness to experience that emotion in my body, my brain, all of a sudden was like, wait, that's not even true. It's not even true that I can't have that. I can totally have that. And I'm not actually missing out on eating that. If I do eat that, I'm missing out on feeling as good as I want to, as good as I possibly can in my body right now in this moment. Now, every time my brain offers up to me a thought process that creates the emotion of deprivation in my body, it's a cue for me to listen to my body and say, hey, oh, what's happening? This is really just a thought error. This is really just a lie my brain is telling me. Because I know if I answer that deprivation emotion with food, what I'm really doing is depriving myself of feeling good for the rest of the day. So, 
you want to be willing to experience the vibration of deprivation. You want to know what that is. You want to make friends with it as a way of understanding it so that then the second part of that is that when you have no fear around it, your brain will be able to see that really what's creating the deprivation is always a lie. You can eat anything you want, but do you really want to eat it? What does your future self say? So the two ways I think about deprivation is first and foremost, I'm willing to experience that emotion in my body knowing that it's a choice. And then from there, I'm going to choose the way that I want to think deliberately. And I suggest you make that choice and how you want to think deliberately from the future you who feels good. When you answer emotional deprivation, it's kind of, for me, my experience is like, I feel like a little kid throwing a tantrum and I have complete disregard for my future self. So I never tell myself I can't have something. And if I notice that emotion of deprivation in my body, all of a sudden it's a cue for my brain to be like, wait a minute, you're just telling yourself you can't have something that's not actually true. And What do I want to think instead? Again, all coming from that willingness to feel the deprivation, to make space for it. Because when you fear the deprivation, what happens is you resist it and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger in your body. And then all of a sudden your brain is like, I can't take it anymore. I'm just going to eat. That's when the rebellion happens. So in order to prevent the rebellion, you need to be willing to experience the emotion of it, even though you know intellectually it's happening from your brain and you're the one creating it with the sentence in your mind. So once you know what the emotion of deprivation feels like for you in your body, then from there decide how do you want to tell yourself the story of you in your relationship with food? What is your future self who feels really good in her body? What does she say to you? Right? When I go back to that story of me sitting there with the breakfast sandwiches, my naturally thin self said to me, hey, you're going to feel a lot better if you don't eat that. So I use the emotion of deprivation anytime I experience it as a cue to tap into my naturally thin self. When I'm feeling deprivation, I'm like, oh, that's just a cue. I'm not being my naturally thin self right now. And so you want to use it in that way as a way to serve you, not a way to fear it. So the next time you feel deprived, tell yourself, I'm just choosing to feel this way right now because of the thought, the sentence in my brain, the words going on in my mind. Be willing to feel it and then decide how you want to think deliberately. What is yourself who feels really good for the rest of the day say to you? And the more decisions you make for your naturally thin self in this moment, the more and more you become her right now. Because being naturally thin doesn't mean you never, ever have a conversation about food again. Sometimes people will say to me, I just never want to think about it ever, ever again. I'm like, that's great, but you're going to be eating for the rest of your life. So I think the question isn't, how can I never think about this again? It's how can I have a delightful, amazing, enjoying conversation with myself in the way that I think about being in my own body and the way I think about food? And that version of you who has a great loving relationship with food in her body and she's at her naturally thin wheat, how does she think about food that's sitting in front of her that she knows isn't going to feel good in her body when her brain is like, I'm going to miss out. I'm not going to feel good. And I just love reminding myself that when I answer the emotion of deprivation with food, All it does is bring me further and further away from my naturally thin self. Because when I answer deprivation with food, I'm depriving myself of being naturally thin. I'm depriving myself of feeling amazing in my body. Deprivation is like my body saying, hey, I have something to say here about this decision you're about to make. Can you please listen to me? So I want you to use deprivation in that way as a cue to get to know your body and get to know what's happening in your brain, not something to fear. It's not something to tuck under the rug. And here's the crazy thing. The more willing you are to feel and understand your deprivation, the less and less you feel it. I would say my experience of feeling deprived is like almost never. (laughs) And when I do notice it happening, it's like an immediate 
flip in my brain that's like, oh yeah, that's totally just a lie. (laughs) I'm going to miss out on feeling the way I want to feel in my body if I eat this right now. And here's the other way that I want you to think about deprivation, especially when you maybe aren't there yet, where you have the immediate flip and switch in your brain. Think about deprivation. Remember, it's a choice. It's an emotional vibration coming from the sentences in your mind. But when you know what that deprivation feels like, you can identify that specific vibration in your body. Use that as the cue of your body saying, hey, listen to me. And you never want to tell yourself, I can't have that. You can totally have that cake, that breakfast sandwich, that food in front of you, but use the deprivation to make an honest choice for yourself. So if you're still going to eat the food, what you want to do is tell yourself, I'm going to eat this and here's how I'm going to feel when I'm done. Make that decision really honestly. So if I was going to eat that breakfast sandwich, it would have sounded like this. Hey, I am creating the emotion of deprivation right now because I'm choosing to believe that if I don't eat this breakfast sandwich, I'm missing out and I don't want to feel like I'm missing out. And so I'm going to make the decision to eat the breakfast sandwich. And when I do, I'm going to feel bloated in my body. I'm going to feel maybe a little constipated. I'm going to feel a little puffy. I'm not going to feel as energized as I typically maybe feel. And it's going to take me longer to get back to feeling the way I want to feel in my body. Tell yourself the truth with how you will feel when you eat the food and then make the decision. So often what we do with the emotion of deprivation and our decisions around food is we like tuck them under the rug. Like I'm going to eat this food and it'll be fine, right? We don't tell ourselves the truth about how we're going to feel afterwards. So of course you can decide to eat whatever you want to eat. You're a grown adult, but do it with the honesty of it and use the emotion of deprivation as a cue to retrain your brain. Do not fear it. And your willingness to understand that vibration as simply a vibration in your body caused by your own mind will allow your brain to completely change the way that you think about food. And the last thing I want to say about deprivation is this, is when we answer deprivation, when we resist that vibration in our body because we don't tell ourselves, this is a choice, I'm choosing to feel deprived, I'm choosing to have this emotion in my body right now because of the sentence in my mind, and I'm willing to feel it. When we don't do that and we fight it and we resist it, it builds and builds and builds and it leads to urgent rushed eating. It leads to eating bigger bites. It leads to eating faster and faster. It leads to eating with more and more distractions. And so this is why it's so important to be honest with yourself about how you're going to feel afterwards if you do decide to eat that particular food in that moment. Because any time you eat rushed, distracted, or urgently, That is like a cue from your body saying, hey, please listen to me. I have something to tell you. This is not the way to your naturally thin weight. So any, any time you notice yourself eating in that way, know that that is not how you reach your naturally thin weight. And that is why we know when we answer deprivation, the emotion of deprivation without being honest with ourselves, and it leads to that rushed, urgent quick eating where we try to just ignore how we're going to feel afterwards. That's not how you become your naturally thin self. It is much more powerful to decide to eat the food with the honesty to yourself of how you're going to feel afterwards than to try to tuck that away under the rug. All right, my friends, go out this week, get to know what deprivation feels like in your body. What does that vibration feel like? Watch yourself, experience it as if you're stepping to the side of yourself and you're just looking at your body, have the vibration of deprivation inside of you. And what does that feel like? Notice where it is, what it feels like. And then once you do that, once you have that willingness, ask yourself in the future, even if it's just an hour later in the evening later or a year from now, that version of you who's naturally thin, who feels so good in her body, how does she want to think differently in that moment. All right, my friends. And if you want to make this a permanent change and you want more help with this, make sure to join me in the Naturally Thin for Life program. We talk a lot about how to change your relationship with deprivation, how to create 
different emotional experiences and different thought processes on purpose so that you have the identity of being someone who just is naturally thin now and for the rest of your life. And that's how you never worry about the weight coming back. All right, my friends, I will talk with you all next week. Friends, if you are loving what you are learning here on the podcast, you have to come check out my Naturally Thin for Life program. It is my on-demand lifetime access program where I teach you brand new concepts not taught here on the podcast. And I will walk you through exactly how to implement all of the tools I teach you here so that they become just a part of you. You will learn exactly how to understand your specific brain and your specific body so that you become naturally thin for the rest of your life and you no longer struggle with your weights. Inside of the Naturally Thin for Life program, you can also receive live help so that you consistently make progress and reach your goal. I will teach you how to accelerate your naturally thin journey in a sustainable way so that the change becomes permanent. The best part is that it's risk-free. You either love it or I will give you your money back. If you are ready to finally be naturally thin for life, join us at lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash work with me. That's L-A-U-R-A. D-I-X-O-N coaching.com and click on the work with me tab. I cannot wait to see you there.